Uh, when we talk about how territory have changed, we often focus on demographic or technological aspects. But what happened with the surface of the Earth? Well, uh, in the satellite age, the whole surface of the Earth is covered by satellite footprints. And how do you see South America in this aspect about satellite footprints uh, and how have changed the surface of the Earth? Satellites are used in South America by the more local satellite operators such as Hispasat, um, Star One, and Glow uh, Satmex in order to try to cultivate a regional market that is based on Spanish and Portuguese languages. And so those satellites carry signals throughout South America into Central America and North America and parts of Europe. And so those footprints cover a huge area with a big marketplace for signal transport. Um, and I know that there are a lot of satellite internet services being developed for uh, remote parts of South America that are not big sites of urban activity, but village life. Some people are using satellites to extend the internet to those remote areas too. Could you talk about the future of the surface of the Earth? Well, it's, it's important to recognize that satellites are not only turning the surface of the Earth into footprints, that's communication satellites, but there are also a different type of satellite called remote sensing satellites, and these satellites are used more and more to take pictures of the surface of the Earth. You probably have heard of Google Earth, right? Well, Google Earth is a database where you can see the whole surface of the Earth from an aerial or satellite perspective and navigate through every city and every street, mm. thanks in part to satellite technologies. Some people think this is a good thing because it makes the world more accessible to us. It brings the Earth to our fingertips, in a sense, and allows us all to be these digital navigators of the planet. At the same time, I think it's important to recognize that these satellite operators and these digital companies such as Google are turning the surface of every country into their intellectual property. So the surface of Argentina or Bolivia or Brazil, those images, those satellite images of the surface are not owned by these countries. They're owned by big corporations like Geosat or GeoEye and Digital Globe, US uh, remote sensing yes. firms and Google mm -hmm. that partner together to present the earth in this digital way. Mm -hmm. And there are some countries that are very concerned about sovereignty um, and they say they don't want their whole country take, you know, photographed from orbit without their permission. So there are a lot of controversies that have emerged in relation to satellite remote sensing. We can talk about satellite footprints and signal territories, but we can also talk about satellite remote sensing and the way the whole Earth is turned into a digital database that we can navigate at the sur surface of a mobile phone or a laptop or other types of interfaces. How is the orbit now and how do you see it in the future? Orbital space is a highly structured and regimented space and it's very hard to even gain access to maps of orbital space because it's a highly privatized domain even though it's not supposed to be. Um, right now the geostationary orbit is very congested with lots of satellites. Um, there are at least over 300 satellites in that orbital space and um, there are all kinds of elaborate complex operations where if a satellite is defunct and not work, working anymore you can move it to a so-called parking orbit or it's almost like a cemetery in orbital space where all the dead satellites go so that they get out of the way and make space for the new generation of satellites. So there are a lot of people within the satellite industry that are concerned about orbital debris um, the pollution of orbital space, because as you've seen in the news in recent years, sometimes satellites do fall back to the Earth, and there's a lot of concern about public safety and damage to the environment, because it's hard to predict exactly where a satellite will fall. Um, but there are lots of interesting politics and environmental issues and economic issues related to the structures and organization of orbital space, and I think 
since those satellites cost so much money, they, the operators want to recoup their investment. So those satellites are going to be up there running throughout their lifetime. They're not going to disappear anytime soon. And they're going to try to find more and more ways to use satellites in relation to the internet and the mobile telephone and the broadcasting sectors.